to be alive at this time means to be in the midst of great changes, sea changes, people even call them. From a certain point of view, you could call it the flood times, where change has become a flood, whether it's technological change or cultural change or political change or economic change. Um, and not all the changes are good. I think everybody can see and feel that. But the strange thing is that change, which is essential to life, at the very core of life, as in the alteration between night and day every 24 hours, as in the change of season to season, the cycling of the seasons, change is happening to us and all around us all the time. And yet, in order to make a conscious change, a person encounters all kinds of difficulties, as does a culture. Right now, modern culture is assaulted by changes, radical climate change, radical terrorist acts, radical financial changes, but trying to make meaningful changes within all that flood of change is very difficult. And the same thing inside a person. A person has to deal continually with changes nowadays. People are being invaded by text messaging. They're being uh, you know, interrupted by cell phones uh, and so on and so forth. All of those things which are changing even as we purchase one, the next one, the new version is being made, changes all around us and penetrating us all the time, but in one's own life, to make a conscious or meaningful or creative change turns out to be very difficult. So I've been putting two words together, change and soul, or soul and change, because it has occurred to me that what's usually missing when a change is being attempted, and one reason why changes don't follow all the way through, the typical ingredient that is missing is the soul. In traditional cultures like in West Africa, uh, they used to say, maybe they still say, that um, change is nature or nature is change. And then they take it one step further and say the nature of change is magic. Not illusion or sleight of hand, but genuine magic. And I think maybe the English word for that would be transformation. So there's a sense in which it's not simple change we're looking for, whether it's the individual or the culture, but it's really transformation that we're looking for. And transformation is an issue of the soul, and it only occurs, we only fully transform when the soul is involved. So then someone might say, well, what is the soul? And the answers are gonna be a little bit oblique because the soul doesn't like to be very direct. The soul is actually indirect. Not only that, the soul is diverse. The soul is the place of many. The soul is the manifold aspect of the world. The soul is the glue of the world. The soul is the secret glue that holds the world together just the way it's the glue that holds people together in a relationship. When a relationship is falling apart, it's typically because the soul has already departed. The soul is the aspect of a human being that keeps body and mind together, or mind and matter, as people like to say now. The issue in the division between mind and matter is really the absent third part, which is the soul. The soul is part physical. The soul loves physical matter, and the soul loves material things as in the case where soul loves instruments, or soul loves artifacts, or soul loves art. But the soul is also partly spirit. It's connected to the spirit, it's connected to the mind. The soul is that thing which goes between and therefore is able to connect. And when people can't affect change, it's usually soul that is missing. And you could say that modern culture in its disturbances nowadays, is missing soul more often than not. 
When soul is absent, people move further and further away from each other and they begin to disappear into their favorite technological toy. When soul is present, people come together. Soul is the essence of dance. It's the essence of eroticism. The soul by its very nature is erotic. It wants to make life into an act of love. It wants to make life into a dance. It must, wants to make life into a song. And the kind of song that soul likes is a, is a song that has some depth to it because soul is about depth. Spirit is about height, getting up above things, having a peak experience, getting to the top of the heap. Soul is about descending, getting to the depth of things, getting to the deeper understanding, getting deep into the touch of one's own life and being in touch with the lives of other people and even being in touch with the life of nature. Soul is the essence of change and change is related to nature and every human being's inner nature is capable of transformation and change and actually trying to change in a meaningful way but it can't happen unless a per <clears throat> it can happen excuse me unless a person is in touch with their own soul and the soul knows what it wants it knows what it loves one of the old names for soul was anima um, because soul tends to have a feminine tone and one of the old statements was anima has issues. Anima is trying to intrigue us into the important issues in our life. Soul is not looking for simple, simple comfort. It's looking for a complicated way of being deeply touched and moved by the world and the soul will get us into trouble in order to get us to change. And the changes that are going on now and the great troubles of the world from the point of view of the soul, you could say, are here to help us transform and become ourselves because, cause that, because that's our only real job in this world, to allow our own soul to lead us into the transformation that leaves us at the end more fully ourselves, a more descended human and a more complete person able to act in concert with both cultural imagination and with the cycling and flow of nature. <laughs>